All right, so I want to talk Colorado and USC this weekend in Boulder, and I'm talking about Colorado, so I'm, I'm sure that there's people typing comments already. You know, I, I'm not even 11 seconds into the video, but I'm, I'm sure that the, the fingers are already going. You know, it's, it's, it's funny, though. I've got a note. I love Colorado, and I love everything that they're doing. I love, you know I love Deion Sanders' innovative approach and everything that's going on up there, the culture. It's amazing. But that's flock that's bands of Colorado what would it what, what would the word for it even be not even not even supporters fans I don't even I don't even really know how to describe them but like the I've heard loyalists as a term that there, there is a lot of Colorado people I guess that commented on my Colorado TCU video after I predicted TCU to win by a field goal saying you're wrong this and that hurt that Pearl and all these 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 things, these comments at me. And I'm just like, hey, look, I made a simple prediction here. I, I, I predicted TCU to win by three points. We hadn't seen this Colorado team yet. So I just thought that was interesting that I didn't really hear from them after that, that Oregon game. But they may like where I'm going with this video, so I'm going to continue my analysis. So Colorado just had a humiliating loss against Oregon this past weekend. I'm not surprised. There's... A lot of media outlets that use the words Oregon stunned Colorado. I don't think, I don't think it was really stunning. Colorado was a team that Vegas predicted um, to have three and a half wins this year. And my my forecast was much higher. I'd say around eight, nine games, maybe e even ten, if they can get hot in October and November. It's a t it is a team with a very high ceiling, I will say that. But going up against a team like Oregon that may very well be the best team, most most complete team in the Pac-12. And Watson Stadium, one of the best stadiums in college football, that's a daunting challenge. And like nothing that Colorado had seen yet this year. But they're going to build character. They're going to learn from that loss. It's a, It was a very character-developing win, and it's a win that continues to push Colorado towards finding their identity. You know, you... you you deal with adversity and you find a sense of grit. That's that. That's our growth is is all about. Colorado's facing a different animal than Oregon this weekend, facing the Trojans of USC, which is another team I get to talk about, which is which is pathetic. And and I will acknowledge that myself. I should have talked about USC to this point, and I haven't yet. This is one of the most productive offenses in the nation. I was doing my research last night, and I found that. USC has yet to score below 42 points in any of their contests this year. And granted, Colorado will be their most considerable challenge yet, but the fact that they've yet to score below 42 points is is simply amazing this year. They're, they, they are a lot to handle offensively. They have a deep wide receiver room. And you've got Taj, Wa uh, t excuse me, Taj Washington, you got Brennan Rice. You've got Dorian Singer. You've got Zachariah Branch, who has has emerged as a freshman this year. He's so quick, but you're you're throwing all of that at somebody that 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 is overwhelming. It's kind of like Washington. That 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 is just a lot to cover. So USC has been very productive on the offensive side of the ball, and and and, and that'll present a considerable challenge to Colorado this weekend. However, defensively, the Trojans need work. You know that that that, that was their, their their biggest issue last year. It, it, it looked like every week I turn around and see USC allowing more than forty points in contests against teams that they should not be allowing forty points to. They allowed twenty eight points, four touchdowns to San Jose State and Arizona State, who lost a, who almost lost to Southern Utah at home this year. You know, you can't be doing that. And and you're facing one of the best quarterbacks in college football this weekend in Shador Sanders. Granted, Travis Hunter won't be on the field again, but you still got to worry about Jimmy Horn and Xavier Weaver. These are phenomenal receivers, and I think they're going to put up numbers against USC this weekend. If that's what they're allowing to Arizona State and San Jose State, I think Colorado will have itself a day on offense this Saturday against USC's defense. This is one of those matchups. I remember a couple of years ago when the Raiders would play the Chiefs, and you know the Chiefs are are dominant and offensively explosive with Patrick Mahomes. But for whatever reason, when Derek Carr and those Raiders matched up with 
the Chiefs. I, 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 I believe it was 2020. They, 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 they would put up bazooka numbers. Uh, they, 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 they would drive right down the field with ease. They, 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 they put up 30, 35 points each game, and it would be a shootout between the Chiefs and the Raiders. I think you're going to see a similar concept, a similar matchup this weekend between Colorado and USC because, you know, USC's defense is vulnerable, yes, but, but so is Colorado's. They allowed a lot of points against Colorado State's, and Oregon had themselves a day this past Saturday against Colorado's defense. And offensively, Colorado's got a lot, a lot of work to do when it comes to holding pressure back and get, get, giving Shador Sanders time to go through his progressions and, and, and make the right decision. But this is the, this is a game where we could have two quarterbacks that go in the first round of the NFL draft at some point, whether it's next year or the following. You know, they're, they're two of the best quarterbacks in college football, and I can't wait to watch them sell to, to, to watch them play each other. It, 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 it's going to be fantastic. The way these teams match up, I think it's going to be an absolute shootout. And I think Colorado at home is equipped to win this shootout. So I'm going to go with the home team, the Colorado Buffaloes, 48-42. to I don't think that their season is in peril. I don't think that they're imposters after losing to, to, to Oregon. I think there's teams that match up with Colorado better down the stretch, whether it's Oregon State, whether it's going to Utah, whether it's Washington State. There's teams that match up better with, with, with Colorado, but this is a very favorable matchup for the Buffaloes at home. And I think that they'll win this vintage Pac-12 shootout this weekend on Big Noon Kickoff. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you and the time that you took out of your day to watch the video. And if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like the video and share it as well as subscribe to The Era. The more likes and subscribers I get on this channel, the more resources I can attain and the more resources I can attain, the more value I can provide to you, the viewer. And that is how I show my appreciation for you for the time that you devote to watching my videos. So thank you so much and have a great day.